Hi, I'm Bob Klotz. I'm the main state coordinator for 350 Maine, and I'm down here in a cemetery in South Portland overlooking the Casco Bay uh, and the Casco Bay Bridge near to uh, one of the tank farms here in South Portland. Uh, South Portland's been referred to as an energy city, and as you look around here, uh, there's an interesting dichotomy of energy and behind me a lack of energy in the cemetery. Uh, but I'm here the day after Hurricane Sandy went through. That's the, uh, the wind, uh, pretty intense stuff. And part of why I'm here is to talk about climate change. But the main thing I want to talk with you about first is the Hawaiian shirt and give you a little bit of an insight as to why uh, I wear that. And there is a relationship to climate change. It's not, frankly, to celebrate it. Uh, it's not even necessarily to uh, deal with it in terms of the warmer temperatures, but we definitely uh, have to speak to it, and, and there is uh, speaking to it by my choice in wearing this shirt. So I want to tell you a story that was told to me by someone else, a, a fellow by the name of Coleman Barks, uh, who's known as a interpreter, a translator of the Persian poet Rumi, had a presentation in uh, Portland, Maine a number of years ago that I went to, and he told this story. He was in Israel at the Wailing Wall, and he was approached by an older man, wild white hair, very energetic, wearing a Hawaiian shirt and white silk pants, and a very, very friendly fellow who approached him and through the course of a couple of minutes had invited him uh, to come home with him and which Coleman did uh, for the rest of the week for the time that he was there, he would spend time with this gentleman. And early on, he noticed that he had uh, a tattoo on his forearm and uh, realized that this was a tattoo from the uh, camps uh, in Nazi Germany and, and that uh, this fellow, his name was Abraham, was uh, Jewish and had been a young child at these camps had been taken there with his entire family who over the course of time that they were in the camps everyone in his family was uh, killed uh, through the Nazi uh, experience there. Uh, he as a boy uh, was tortured regularly by uh, a Nazi guard and uh, he had come to a point of just utter despair and hopelessness uh, because he knew every night that this guard was going to come and do to him again what he had done to him every night. And he would pray to God to give him some answer and to give him some clarity as to what was the meaning of all this and why would anyone ever create an experience uh, uh, that was so monstrous and so horrible and so utterly painful. There was one night in particular where uh, he was out, well, the night, the ultimate night, that he was out having uh, suffered through all of this through months and uh, knew that this guard was coming to, to torture him once again. And it was pouring rain and Abraham was on his knees in the rain looking up to heaven again, praying to God uh, for an answer. And he found himself at this place, again, a dichotomy of do I accept that life is horrible and desperate and animalistic and just terrible, or do I make a different choice? And at that moment, what came into him, what came into this young man, was his realization that he would choose joy, that that was his choice, that he could either fall prey to the negative or give over, uh, release himself from the fear and give over to joy, which was his choice. And at that moment, the guard came up to him and Abraham looked at him in his eyes with this commitment in his, his soul to commit to joy. And the guard literally began crying and turned away and walked away and never, never touched that child again. And I heard that story and that next day after that night of hearing that story, I went out and bought this shirt. And my commitment, not being a personality who would normally wear these kind of shirts, my commitment was to joy, to the realization that I had a choice, having suffered with depression and distress and all the craziness that happens with, with the, the human experience. Uh, I knew that I had a choice and I make that commitment uh, to joy. So in wearing the shirt, it's a manifestation of my own commitment to joy. And I need to be reminded, we all need to be reminded, this is the work for me with 350 Maine 
the environmental activism, the inspiration of the Occupy experience. When I came down to the Occupy encampment in Portland, uh, I was in my passive dependent mode of looking for someone to tell me what to do. And I approached the woman and I said, what do you want me to do? And she turned to me and she looked in my eyes and she said, follow your bliss. And I may have heard that in many ways and dismissed it as new agey, but again, it resonated for me at that time that, that that's my responsibility. It's my responsibility. And through a series of events, uh, I've continued to follow my bliss and I'm very much in that place today, including in my work with 350, uh, knowing that given what we are up against, evidenced by uh, the devastation of Hurricane Sandy, uh, the impact on all of us, uh, people dying, uh, people suffering, the infrastructure being damaged to such, such a significant degree, the relationship between these carbon, th greater than 350 parts per million in the atmosphere being associated with climate change, having these extreme weather events, there is an A plus B plus C connection. And that's fundamentally part, using numbers, of the Do the Math tour that's coming up. And so I invite you, I encourage you to show up to our wonderful event in, on November the 13th on the State Theater in, in Portland, Maine for the Do, Ma Do the Math Tour to shed the layers of distress and to wear uh, a Hawaiian shirt as acknowledgement of your commitment to joy, to the work that we all need to do together to make this really happen and to represent your commitment to 350 Maine. And I realize November might be a little chilly, so you can certainly wear something underneath it, but it would really be exciting to have the entire theater filled up with people wearing Hawaiian shirts as we hear the inspiration and the commitment uh, that Bill McKibben has inspired us with, and as we continue to work together to grow this really incredibly fundamentally important movement. Looking forward to seeing you there, thanks.